Mishnah, we're learning uh, Geras Atshuva, page 186, chapter 4, Perik Dalit. This Perik is a continuation of the last chapter, but with much more elaboration and insight. And particularly, what the Alter Rebbe introduces, the idea brought in the Zayar HaKadosh, and the Holy Zayar, that Tshuva is Toshuv Hei. You know, when you ask someone who only learns Gemara or Halacha, it tells you tshuva means repentance, returning to God, and all of that. Regretting. The Zayar knows all that, and the Zayar says that's all true, but the word itself indicates what takes place when you return to Hashem, when you do tshuva. And the Zayar says, you take the word tshuva, and you, you break it up into two, two words, Toshuv Hei, return. The first four letters is Toshuv, to bring back, to return. Hei, the Hebrew letter Hei, the fifth letter. Where do you bring, where do you bring it back to? Like, so the Zayar says that God's name, the holy name of God, the, the ineffable name of God, which is the name of Yudke Vavke, which equals 26, which sometimes you'll see it addressed as the Tetragrammaton. And for us, that's like uh, French and Spanish, you know? What does that mean? But that's the Greek word for the Yudke Vovke. In my early <coughs> studying of, of Hasidus in English, these words were like, uh, like they were so, they came out of space, you know? Uh, my first language is Yiddish, and even knowing English and, and going to school, we, you know, this old English, you know, the old English, the thou, King, ja King James English and all that was like, we looked at very weird and strange. And when you start learning Hasidus and you see some of these words used for ideas in Hasidus or in Torah, for example, tefillin. You know what the equivalent of tefillin is? Phylacteries. You go out on the street today and ask anyone in, 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 in Borough Park, in Williamsburg, and I even say flatbush, what phylacteries are, they don't know what you're talking about. Phylacteries. The tetragrammaton. <laughs> it's the Yudke Vovke. The Yudke Vovke. The most holy name of God that has four letters, the Yud, the Vav, the, the He. The, I'm sorry, the Yud, the He, the Vav, and the He. So when the Zohar says to take the He and return it, reunite it, reconnect it, we're talking about the last He. There are two He's in, the tet, in, in Hashem's most holy name. The first Yud K, Yud He. And then there's Vav He. So the Zohar says that we need to bring back the second He to the Yud K Vav. Because through our transgressions, it was separated. So this is going to be discussed in the chapter. And this is going, and this is going to open up for us an entire field of discussion, which the Alter Rebbe is going to spend a lot of time in the next upcoming up chapters about what he calls two different modes of tshuva. Tshuva ilah, supernal tshuva, higher tshuva, and tshuva tata, and lower tshuva. And all this is going to come together as we go through the chapters. So this is just a brief introduction to the next chapter. Now let's learn inside. Pedic Dala, chapter 4. V'ulam kol hanal, however... All of the above, that there are three aspects to tshuva. One, becoming a bal tshuva by saying, I won't repeat the sin. That's, one, that's bal tshuva 101. Number two is kapora, is atonement and rinsing away the stain that was called, caused by the sin. And number three, to become favorable in the eyes of God like a carbon, and we spoke about fasting and all of that. Those are the three things that we discussed until now. Says the Alter Rebbe, all of the above, 
who ligmar hakapoto, it's to complete atonement, umidu kanefesh lashem, and rinsing away, cleansing away the stain on the soul for God, which is acharachuva. In other words, I should take that back. When he says call on now, he doesn't mean number one. He means the second and third ideas of tshuva, which is what we call kapara. We identify as the second aspect of tshuva. And merutza, favorable, we identify as the third aspect of tshuva. So he says those two come after tshuva, which is the first thing, which is... I'm not going to commit a sin anymore, i.e., I'm about to shuva. As we we mentioned earlier, in the name of the Gemara, Peirakama the Svochim, the first trap is chapter of tractates Svochim. And we mentioned that the Oila Deirinhi, a sacrifice called a carbon Oila, it is a gift. It's a gift that was brought to Hashem. After you're, you're cleansing away the, the stain and making a firm resolution not to do it again, after that, you say, listen, I thank you so much for forgiving me. And I've worked on cleaning up my act of the past, but I really want you to look at me now, not with a... With a, with with uh, with a, neg- a negative eye in the sense that oh once you were a sinner. I want you to look at me as I'm favorable. It's like you never saw me before. I'm right out of I'm fresh out of the box. For that you need to give a gift. You'd be surprised what a gift could do, or even the thought of giving a gift. I had an insurance man come here the, the other day to look at the house, and we prepared the house, and we were told that he's probably going to find this issue and that issue and get ready for not getting the insurance until you fix all that and, and pay through the roof and all of that. So what did Chaim Dolphin do? He learned from what the Alter Rebbe says here in the name of the Gemara. Before the man walked through my door here, I said, hi, how are you? Good to see you. Actually, when he was walking across the street, he was walking towards me. I went out to my porch to greet him, and I smiled. I said, hi, how are you? And he said, fine, and he's coming closer. And as he comes up the steps, I say, listen, I would love to give you a gift. I have a lot of frozen, well-vacuum-packed vacu- cold cuts. Can I give them to you? Now, usually when you give a gift, you give a bottle of scotch. Or you give money. And I offered him cold cuts. He wasn't offended because we were smiling and I greeted him. And he said, oh, that's so nice of you. But, you know, I have, and he was, you know, upstanding man, gentleman. Thank you very much. He went inside and he, it took him two or three minutes. He took a few pictures. He went out and yesterday I got the answer all approved. Now, do I know? Did I ask? Do I know why? Better don't ask questions, right? Just accept the, 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 the gift you were given. But the idea is that, you know, giving a gift to someone or wanting to give, it goes a long way. You know, and I know that maybe you could, some will consider it, oh, this is bribery. It's not bribery. You're allowed to give a person a gift, Okay. And we know that the Gemara says one should someone who, who despises gifts will live, will live longer. There's, that's also true. And the Rebbe never took a gift. Or he, he tried not to, I should say. I should say he tried not to. Whenever someone brought the Rebbe a book, he said, for, for a book you have to pay. And he would give him a few dollars or... You know, and, 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 and people, you know, wanted to give the Rebbe a silver menorah, a silver, uh, the, you know, uh, becher, and different things. And the Rebbe usually did not accept it, you know. So there is that concept too. I'm not, you know, but all I'm saying is, because the Alter Rebbe says here, 
you've done you've done tshuva, you've done kapara, and then he says there's the third thing which we spoke a lot about in yesterday's year, the concept of your know, fasting, which is in lieu of giving a gift. It's like you're looking to become favorable in Hashem's eyes, not just acceptable. Okay, I'll use better words. Alan Dershowitz once wrote the book. The Surviving Jewish American or American Jew, I forget the title. And when I uh, saw the book, I said I would write, I would give, I would give it a different title if I could justify it. The Thriving Jewish American. If you're a Jewish American properly, you should be thriving, not just surviving. Yes, uh, Hillel. I just wanted to comment that uh, the the idea of the own evokes the you know the famous Chazal describing Yaakov's preparation for meeting with Asa. Yes, that, 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 that's exactly what's the uh, source of it. Correct, correct. Okay, um, now let's continue. We're on the f- fourth line of chapter four on page 186 in Geras HaTshuva. Um, however, has mitzvah of What's the beginning? The first thing. And what's the ikra? The main thing of tshuva is loshuv ad Hashem be'emes. It's to truthfully return to God over left sholem and with a complete heart. Moshe, two things. One is that your tshuva should be emes, true, not fake. And number two, belef sholem, with com- a complete heart, a sincere heart. And every one of us knows what that is. Okay, so these, th- th- this is necessary for Tshuva to be true. To, I'm sorry, for Tshuva to be the ultimate of Tshuva, or as the Alter Rebbe used the words, Ve'ikara, Ikar. The main idea is Emes and Lev Shalem. And he says, Ahechrich Levayer, Alter Rebbe says, to accomplish this Menashe, for it to be Emes, and with a complete heart, we are forced. Hechach means it is absolutely ne- necessary. It's not that we have an option. You see, we have to. Levayed hatev and to explain, and not just to explain, but Baruch to explain well. Sabir, with an elaborate explanation. This is a, a, a lot of adjectives the Alter Rebbe uses here. But they're necessary to get through our thick skull that to understand something well and to live with it and to be motivated by it, to feel it in your heart, you have to explain it well. And this is written during the Alter Rebbe's time, 250 years ago, where Jews were more spiritual, supposedly, right? Yet the Alter Rebbe says, spiritual here, spiritual there, in order to, to really be about the Shuva, you have to explain things. And this is coming up to the Rebbe's yard site, which is on Gimel Tamas next week. This is very appropriate. The Rebbe and his father-in-law spent so much time and encouraged the elaboration and explanation of Torah and Hasidus to the, for the Jewish people, in all languages, in all languages, and not to and not to rely on. Oh, he's a yeshiva boy. He's she's a a girl that studied in a, a girl seminary. No, no, no. If you want someone to be emes true, the left shalim, you need levayer heitev. You have to explain the issue well and. Sabir means the elaboration of the explanation. And this we see is done more and more today. So when people give you a hard time for using an art scroll, Gemara, tell them this line of the Al Rebbe. Today, the art scroll Gemara, both in Hebrew and English or other languages, is a blessing. Should a yeshiva boy 18 years old in Slabotke or in Chabad or in Mir or wherever in the, in the Hesder Yeshiva, not use a regular Gemara to try to figure out the meaning without 
the cheat notes. The art school Gemara mark would be like the cheat notes. You know, remember the Regents? I don't know if you guys had the Regents of New Jersey, but we had it in New York, right? Um, what was that, uh, uh, the red book that we always prepared the Regents with? Uh, Yoni, you remember? What was it called, that Regents book? Barons, Barons Regents. Barons, yeah, 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 Barons. Barons, Barons. Every year when I took the Regents, I, you know, the, I, I prepared with that. You know, and you were allowed to. The art school Gemara compared to a non art school Gemara would be like, uh, have them, like a Baron's, like, you know, a Baron's Regents. And much more, of course. Yes, yes, sir. On the other hand, when I was learning with the base Medrash Bucker in Edison, I was told if you have somebody who's always using a shoe of terms, tell him, explain that to me, explain that to me in English. And if he can't, it means he doesn't understand it. And I agree. I agree with that. That's 100% and they true. Do, they, they talk yeshivish, but if you ask them to explain the concept in English, they can't. Right. Right. And, and the same is with any piece, of, any piece of Torah. If you cannot explain something to, a, to someone who's not you know, familiar with that language and those concepts, that means you don't understand it well. Right. Anyway, I'm just, I'm just pointing out to you how here a line in Tanya, which has nothing to do with art scroll and nothing to do, right? But you, you, you see an approach, and this is important as when we learn Tanya, sometimes we wonder, you know, I can read this myself. You can, but you won't get this. You got to look for the inner endos in between the lines and focus on the in, what seems to be insignificant, not important, like this line, big deal. But the Altareb is giving us a message here. Bar Chava Sabiyo. Explain it elaborately. Okay, let's go on. So Behegdim, so he, 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 pre, he, he preached, and now he lives his preaching. Behegdim, he says, let me introduce to you first Mashakosav B'Zayir HaKadosh, what's written the Holy Zayir, Bebiyar Milas Tshuva, in explaining the word Teshuva, Al Derech HaSoyit, based on the esoteric meaning of tshuva. So clearly, clearly, Avram, the Rebbe says, what I'm going to teach you now is not found in the Talmud, or it's not revealed in the Talmud, and it's not the Talmudic approach. It is the esoteric approach, the Kabbalistic approach, as, as, as shared in Hasidus. So, if you look into the Zohar, the Holy Zohar, you see it in Kabbalistic words. The Alter Rebbe being a student of the Baal Shem Tov and the Magid and, and Hasidus, like the other Hasidic Rebbe's, have, have their style of incorporating and interpreting and explaining Zoharic words and concepts. So what does he say it is? And he says, look, there's a period after the word Saud, and he says it's Toshuf Hey, period. He makes it very clear. It's very defined. The Zoya says, Tshuva is Toshuf Hey. Bring back, return the Hey that was removed, departed, bring it back to the Yud Vav. And he explains. Hey Tato. We bring back the lower hay, the last hay of the Yudke Vafke of God's name. That would be the concept of tshuva tato, lower tshuva. We don't know yet what that is. We'll get to that soon. Hey lo, oh, now he says about, he's talking about another hay, the higher hay. That's the first hay, right? Yud, hay, vav, hay. So he says that the last hay refers to tshuva tato, the lower hay. The second hay of the four letters of God's holy name is the higher hay, and that has to also be brought back. And he says now, the gam, so that's one introduction that we have to look at and explain at length. We also need to explain what's written 
in several places in Zayar, she ain't chuva mo elis le poi game brisa yu mighty zerlevato. Chuva doesn't help to someone who masturbates and spills seed, waste seed. Ask Stalter Rebbe, and this is a question that Baruch asked me the other day on, on, on regarding general chuva, not just not regarding this particular transgression. This is a very, very strange ish, uh, perspective. We have, a, we have a rule. Yerushalmi, it's in the Jerusalem Talmud. It didn't, it didn't come from Cinderella and from, uh, you know, uh, the Fonzarelli or any other movie. This came from the Talmud. Yerushalmi, Jerusalem Talmud. And what is that? There's nothing in the way of tshuva. If a Jew wants to do tshuva, you can always do tshuva. Even if someone desecrated and worshipped idols, or had incest-like relationships which are forbidden, or murdered, Chulum refers to Shvi Chazdamim, etc. The third one, murder. Tshuva will even forgive those sins. By the way, it doesn't mean you won't have a punishment. You still will, will be punished. But Tshuva forgives the sin. So one second, stop. We have a contradiction. One place it says tshuva doesn't help for the sin of pagan bris, and the other chazal, the other uh, saying of the sages is there's nothing in the way of tshuva. How do you reconcile the two? Comes along the Reishis Chachma, Baruch Gordon, the Baruch, the Reishis Chachma saw that you asked the question and he gives an answer, and the Alter Rebbe brings it here. O Pirish Reishis Chachma. Shekavonas hazoya, that the meaning of the zoya she'ain mo elis tshuva is tshuva tato. Oh, the zoya means if you only do the lower type of tshuva, the hey tato, that is not strong enough to forgive the sin of masturbation. Kiim, rather, you must also do tshuva ilo the higher level of tshuva, and that will forgive the sin of masturbation. That's the explanation given by the Reishis Chochmah. So the alternative, Rebbe, yes. Rebbe, you, uh, so the thing is, so basically what we learned yesterday is the more serious thing would be the actual fasting, and the less serious would be giving tzedakah. So according to him, he's saying you, you can't do the tzedakah in this case. Wait, wait, I, I, I hear your question, and, and I understand it, but let us go through the chapter and then come back, okay? Yoni. Yes, Hillel. Yeah. Uh, yeah, can you just um, uh, remind me and expand on who the Rashi's Chachma was? I know the name, Eliyahu Bidas or something, and something, and I think he was from Sfat. Can you say a little more about him, in fact? The, Re- the Rashi's Chachma was amongst the uh, Mekubalim slash ethic, e- ethic, m- Musser, Musser-like, but early Musser, not Musser from Rebbe. Before the movement. Before the movement, before, before Rebbe Sro Salanter. Rebbe Sro Salanter, you talk about in the se- late in the 1700s. And here we're going back, or much earlier. So the Reish's Chochma is, is, a, is a safer. Growing up in yeshiva, what we heard about the Reish's Chochma was that it's fire and brimstone. And, you know, he lays it out. He, he, he says exactly what needs to be done and what happens if you don't do, and he gives you the full plate. And it's, it's tough stuff. Now... The Reish's Chochma also has a very important section, which I learned in preparing myself for marriage when I became, 
when I was a chassan, when I was engaged, knowing I'm getting married, uh, the Rebbe wrote, wrote to many, many chassanim and others that it's important to read, to learn Reish's Chachma certain section. And there he talks about marriage, uh, preparation for marriage, the intimate act, how to go about it in a spiritual way. So Reish's Chachma in Chabad was kind of uh, looked at and studied just that section because Chabad didn't, um, as a study, study Musr. Individual studied Musr, but as a Limud, the Baal Shem Tov, we study Hasidus. All of us tell me they are Baal Shem Tov. We choose Hasidus as a regular study versus Musr. Not that you shouldn't study Musr either, but the emphasis is Hasidus. But the Reishas Chochma added a very important element, both for those who are into Musr. Musr is moral ethical teachings, which includes scolding and, you know, knowing exactly what sin will get which punishment. You know, it's, it's uh, like you go to the court for, a, you know, a parking ticket, a speeding ticket, a left turn ticket, tells you the amounts and tells you this and tells you that. You know, it's a whole list of, um, of things. So Reish's Chachma became, in a way, famous for that. Again, he wasn't the only one, Rabbeinu Yoyna, who was during the time of the Rambam, you know, also has that. But Reish's Chachma uh, became a little more popular. I don't know why. We have to, you know, maybe because they burnt. I, I don't know. Rabbeinu Yoyna, I think, burnt the Rambam's uh, Sefer Moren um, Nevuchim, they say. So maybe he lost popularity later. I, I don't know. That has to be studied or looked at. But Reish's Chochma seemed to be accepted by everyone as the authority on Musr, early Musr. And that's how he got his prominence. That's what I would answer you. But I, and, I, and I'm also, okay, and I'm, Hila, I'm just also adding that even Hasidim, particularly Chabad, Chabad Hasidim, uh, during the Hasana time, during the preparation, we were encouraged to learn Reish's Chachma because, you know, there's a time for everything. And, you know, when you're getting married, you, you need to know the score. You, you, this is the time. You know, it reminds me, I went over to a Hasid who was born in 1900. This is 1984. I was getting married. You know, this venerable chassid, he was 84 years old at the time. He learned in Lubavitch, the Rashab's yeshiva. He saw Rabarov Bear, Leibowitz. He saw the rugged shover. He saw big, big giants of Torah. And he himself was someone who was a smart man, a knowledgeable man. And he gave his life for Yiddishkeit in the underground in the 20s and 30s in Russia. It wasn't just talk. Anyway. His name was Rabbi Avram Mayor. I've mentioned him many times. One, another mashpia of mine that I, that I you know, spoke to and took direction from. So I met him in 770. Here I am getting married soon. So I said, Rabbi Avram, could you share with me how, what is the Chabad approach? What should be to marriage? You know, I never, didn't have any girlfriend till then. This was a whole new world. I'm marrying a woman. <laughs> and, you know, like, okay. So he said to me, I'll tell you one thing, and then the rest, you come back to me after you're married, and I'll tell you more. So he was very careful what to tell me and what not to tell me. And why do I say that? Because there's a time when you have to say, now is the time. So I'll tell you what he told me. It's no, no, it's no uh, big secret, but it's why he told it to me at that time, right? Before you get married, you, you try to set up an apartment, or you try, right? You, you have to live somewhere, not just yourself. You have a, a spouse, okay? So you need to buy beds. You need to have a bed to sleep in. 
So he said the Chabad cost tradition is, he said this in the name of the Alter Rebbe. Hasidim said that the Alter Rebbe taught them. This goes back in our tradition to the Alter Rebbe, to our author here, that a husband and wife generally should sleep in two separate beds. That's all he told me. He didn't, he didn't add, he didn't subtract. He said, so you're going to get married. You should, you know, those who say, make sure you buy two beds. So you both can sleep in separate beds. He didn't say when, how, he didn't go into it. So I'm not going to elaborate now. I have what to say, by the way, but not now. We'll, we'll do that when we're not online, okay? When I, when next, sometime when I'm on Bet Shemesh, if it interests you, I will spill the beans for you. But anyway, the point is, there's a time to talk. So the Rebbe suggested to Chabad grooms, you know, now is the time to learn Reish Hashachim. I know that we Hasidim aren't into Musr, but you're getting married, and you have to know what it means to be holy in the bedroom. And the Reish Hashachim gives details about being holy in the bedroom. So now is the time for you to learn it. So... I'm just saying that Dalte Rebbe here opens up for us this whole idea of doing tshuva, right? So he says that the fact that you see a statement in the Talmud or elsewhere that for this particular transgression, wasting semen, there's no repentance, can't be. But that's what it says. And then we see a st- sentence that says you can, you can always repent. You can always return to God. I don't like the word repent. It sounds very Christian. You can always return to God. You can always return to your real self. How do you reconcile it to? So he quotes the Reish's Chachma. And the Reish's Chachma picked up on the question. And he says, it depends what aspect of tshuva you're doing. If it's what we call lower tshuva, tshuva tata. That's not adequate. If it's the higher tshuva, that's adequate. What that is, we didn't learn yet. We're going to learn in the future classes. We'll stop here, and we'll continue tomorrow. Rebbe, what's the, what's the name of that sefer, of the Reish's Chachma? What's it called? That it's, call, it's called, no, it's called Reish's Chachma. His name, his, his, name, his name is, what? What you say here, uh, yes, sir? What is that? That's the name of the Sefer. That's the name of the Sefer, but he, he was Rebellio Vidash, right? Uh, Vidash? Yes. So, Vidash, yeah. So, uh, Yoni, um, the name of the author is Eliyahu, I think, Vidash. You look it up online. The name of his, his famous Sefer is called Reish's Chochma. Okay, have a great day. We'll see everyone tomorrow. Yeah, Take you. care. Bye bye. Take care. Be well, everybody. Thank you.